This is the fourth module for what to do when you're trying to characterize an unknown liquid. It presupposes that you've already done steps one, two, and three, which are the signs and symptoms, the initial recce, and then the stripping, the various strip-based tests. Only do this module for sure if you've been trained and you've got all the safety procedures in place because you are playing with, you are playing with fire and if you're doing this incorrectly, you could hurt yourself, you could hurt your partner, or if you're doing it really badly and you're doing it close to the scene of the, the original call, you could light the whole thing on fire and that would be a bad day. The first thing you're going to mix your liquid with is water. And we do this for a couple of reasons. We want to find out whether it's soluble or not. We want to find out whether it floats or sinks, what the specific gravity is, whether it's greater than one or less than one. And we want to find out if it's water reactive. Clearly, if we mix, this unknown liquid with water and it starts hissing and it starts bubbling well then we know it's water reactive and this might really change the course of what we're going to do at this call i'm going to show you how to do it you put about an inch of water in a test tube you're wearing your proper ppe at a minimum you're going to be wearing uh, glasses and gloves. I know what this chemical is. It's rubbing alcohol. Therefore, I don't need to wear a respirator. You may well need to wear a respirator, SCBA, some kind of suit. That's determined by the call. And we're going to add a little bit of the unknown liquid to the water. We're pointing this test tube away, point it towards your friend, not towards yourself. I'm going to add a couple of drops. Okay, I don't see any hissing. I don't see any bubbling. I'm going to add a little bit more, and I'm going to add a little bit more. Now, when you try this, you'll be able to see uh, that this compound is mostly sitting on top of the water. That tells me the specific gravity is less than one. That could be really useful in trying to identify a compound. And it also looks like it's beginning to mix with the water a little bit. I agitate it just a little bit. It does seem to be mixing, which means it is miscible with water, at least to some extent. So now we know it's not water reactive, the specific gravity is less than one, and it's miscible with water. These are useful things. If we added an oil or a diesel or an unknown uh, hydrocarbon, it might well float at the top of the water and form a really distinct boundary. That would also be useful information. The second part of this module for characterizing an unknown liquid is a burn test. Do you remember the, uh, the video, Will It Blend? This is kind of similar, except it's called Will It Burn? Basically, you're going to take about the size of a quarter or a loony worth of liquid in a Petri dish. I've also seen it done on the top of a pop can, an upside down pop can. And you're going to try lighting it on fire. You're going to bring in a match from the side and then observe several things. You're going to observe whether or not the flame jumps to the match. If it does, it tells you that it's got a high vapor pressure. There's a lot of flammable vapors coming off. Do the vapors put out the match? Does the match ignite? Do I have to make contact with the liquid before it burns? What color is the flame? What color is the smoke? And you can go to the reference section of the, uh, the unknown products protocol, which will help you interpret what all these results mean. So let's start burning some stuff. We're going to start with goof off, which I read here is contains alcohols, heptane, petroleum distillate, xylene, diethyl glycol, monobutyl ether, lots of flammable stuff. And I'm not even halfway down the list yet. So put a small amount in, strike a match, and I'm bringing it in from the side. Ah, yes. So you saw the flame started long before we actually got to the, uh, to the material itself burning with a yellow flame, not with too much smoke. This is methanol. It's an alcohol. Add a tiny bit to it. Let's see if methanol is flammable. I'm bringing it in from the side. Ah yes, it caught fire long before it touched. It's hard to see there, but it's burning with a light blue flame with hardly any smoke. A 
Let's play Does It Burn with Hydrogen Peroxide. Small little amount. Apparently, hydrogen peroxide does not burn, which is what we would expect. Let's try Ronson on a lighter fuel, a light petroleum distillate. Coming in from the side, yes. Again, it lit up long before I got to the actual uh, flame, burned out quickly. Smoke, or not too much, flame yellow. Excellent information to have. Methanol burn, how about isopropyl rubbing alcohol? At 70%. alcohol burns as well. So you can see the flames are a little bit more yellow than the methanol, but there's still a touch of blue, so you can say it burns with a blue-yellow flame with hardly any smoke. Let's try over-the-counter glycerin. It's pretty thick stuff. It's about the size of a large coin. And we're bringing it in not jumping to the match the way the other uh, the other substances did. I'm now touching the match to the liquid. It seems to be mostly extinguishing the match. Let's keep going here. There, so it took three matches to get it going, but it's finally beginning to burn. Unlike the other products, it took a lot more work. So we know that glycerin isn't super flammable. This is a really useful information to have when you're trying to figure out what to do with a large amount of an unknown spilled liquid. Depending on whether this is enough information for you or not, you can either stop the entire exercise here, or you can continue on to the pull tube checklist, which is step five of the unknown liquids protocol.